Hey, everybody, and a good morning. And you know what? As I say that, I realize I should stop saying good morning in these videos. Uh, it's typically, I'm a very early early riser, maybe too many years in the military. Um, realizing it could very well not be morning at all when you are when you're watching this but anyway I've got my uh, I got my coffee and uh, we're gonna talk about SFDX uh, so here's uh, I'm gonna we are gonna go into part two and uh, this is what I promised we're gonna work through the two um, trailhead apex trigger challenges using uh, SFDX style development we're gonna actually kind of get heavy into the command line and and to get as well not just the Salesforce CLI. Lots of cool stuff to be done with the command line. And I think understanding the fundamentals of version control is pretty important for everyone. And so I'm going to say if you are not familiar with triggers at all, uh, I highly recommend you pause this video right now and go watch the last video I just made just on triggers. Uh, the reason I say that is because I, there's some concepts that we're going to go into here that I'm not really going to stop and explain. We are just, you know, like trigger handlers, some of the trigger context variables, things like that. We're not going to talk about those in this video. We are just, I'm just going to assume that uh, you know how they work. If you don't, um, no problem. Go watch that, that last video I made just for that reason, and then uh, catch up on this one. All right, so uh, let's take our first look. So we are going to, uh, let's go to Trailhead. So here's what we're going to do. We are in the Apex Triggers Get Started uh, Challenge 1. And for this challenge, we need to create a trigger that, uh, before insert or update, checks for a checkbox. And if that checkbox field is true, it sets the postal code uh, to be the same as shipping. It sets shipping to be the same as billing. Right? And we all know in the real world, we'd probably just handle this with a simple process builder or flow. But it's a good example of writing some pretty simple code. Uh, trigger must be called account address trigger and feel we'll need a new custom checkbox. Okay. And so I'm just going to touch on this real quickly. I feel like there's some bad practices here, honestly. Um, if you remember from the video I just made, like I would never write an account address trigger, right? I would have an account trigger and a trigger handler. And that's actually what we're going to do in this video. Um, Although we are going to have to call it account address trigger to, to pass the challenge, I'm sure. Um, but we're not going to put our business logic in the trigger. I'm assuming it'll still pass the challenge. Uh, I'm doing this, like you know, doing this live. So uh, so who knows? But as long as it works, it should work, right? Um, but we're going to do this without writing code in the trigger itself. All right. So that said, let's uh, switch over to we know our requirements. Um so let's say our first thing, let's create that custom field. And I'm going to just copy and paste that name. Anybody that's done a couple trailhead challenges, I'm sure has had that experience of failing because uh, of a typo somewhere in a field name. So I already, this is my scratch org. Just to be clear, I already had my scratch org open before we started. So this is the scratch org that we're going to develop this project, this challenge in, right? So we're on our account object, fields and relationships. I mean, if you're watching this, I kind of assume you know how to create a custom field, but we're going to do it all. Checkbox. Next. And I'm going to, you know what, I don't think it says, so we're going to default that sucker to checked. Ooh, some way. Control V. Hey, what happened? I don't know why it's doing that to me. So, uh, copy and paste is, we're just going to say match billing address. Match billing address. We've done this before, so there it is. And we're going to just in the description, we're going to add for trailhead. Okay, next. Uh, I'll make that so. You know what? We're good. It doesn't matter, I guess, because we have actually set our profiles on our force ignore file. And I'll talk about that for a second. I should cover that. Um, all right, so and let's hit save. All right, uh, so custom field made. Let's, uh, before we go any further, let's, okay, so I'm going to uh, open up IntelliJ, Illuminated Cloud, 
and talk a little bit about what we're doing here. Okay, so right now this is blank. Uh, we are on a new project. And what we're going to do, first off, is I just want to type in, I'm going to type in get status. And it says, okay, so this is important. So I'm on my master branch and the master branch is, think of like your production branch, right? Well, if when you create a new Git repository, your master branch is the default. This should be where your, the stable, well-tested version of your code lives. Um, and it's telling me I have nothing to commit. My working tree is clean. I have no changes in my working directory that Git is tracking. Um, now we don't actually ever want to develop on our master branch. Like I said, that is, that's stable. We don't mess with it. Um, after code is thoroughly tested and good, then we merge it in to that branch. So what we actually want to do, we're going to create a new branch, get branch. That's all we have to do. And I'm going to name it trigger two. Uh, and I'm named because the, it, the video I did earlier on triggers was branch trigger one. Okay. And oftentimes you understand with get no news is good news. Um, you, you won't get typically like a success message, right? If you didn't get an error, it worked. So we created, if you want to double check that that branch was created, just type in get branch. And I can see, okay, so my, my local machine is aware of the master branch, trigger one and trigger two. Now I want to work on the trigger two branch. So I'm going to, I'm going to type get checkout trigger two. And it's tell me, hey, so you switched. You are now on trigger two. And the same thing. If I type get status again, it's going to tell me you are on branch trigger two. You have nothing to commit. Your working tree is clean. So for the first thing, let's try to pull down uh, that custom field that we just made in our scratch art. So SFDX force source pull. Wait a second for that to run. I'm going to have a sip of my coffee. Mm. Okay, so boom, I, we need to see the command line is letting us know. We have the account uh, billing address field, custom field. And now, first I'm gonna show you, let's do, for, here's a, a quick command. I, I'm typing a lot because I want to show you how it works, but a uh, quick command line pro tip. Uh, if you hit the up arrow or the down arrow, that takes you like through your memory. Um, so you can save yourself a lot of typing. So get status. And hey, look, now my working directory, it's got something. Um, it has got, let's open it up. Objects, account, fields. And I have my new custom field. So in SFDX style development, this is what that looks like. You can see uh, the four trailhead is in our description. Um, this, I love this so much more than if you're used to traditional Salesforce, you know, uh, source style development where you've got, you know, the source folder and your, say your account object or any of your custom objects are just, I mean, it's still an XML file, but you know what I mean? Like it's just one massive XML file. Uh, this is so much nicer, so much uh, more readable. And now it's much easier to track in project history. You know, if you want to track custom fields, things like that. Um, so we're not going to do it, but if I went in here and if I wanted to change, you know, these labels, the description, I could do this right from my editor and just push it back up to my scratch art. Uh, all right, so we have got our custom object. I'm gonna close that out. And so for, I'm just gonna show you, so we're gonna add this to Git. Git add, because right now, okay, I'm just gonna explain. So what this is telling me, this is an untracked file. Um, it is in my working directory, but it's not being tracked to stage for a commitment. So I want to do git add. Now there, I'm just, I, if I haven't hit them with a command line pro tip is tab will give you autocomplete. So instead of having to type, you know, and I'm going to do objects. Well, you know what, since I only have one thing, I'm just going to hit enter from there. Let's run git status again. Hey, look, 
now I have a change ready to be committed. This is, and so what Git is saying, this is in what we call our staging area. Um, so things in Git move from working directory, staging area, and then when we commit them to our local repository, and finally to the remote repository, which in this case is GitHub. You may be using Bitbucket, you know, GitLab, anything like that. Some sort of remote repository hosted on a server that many developers can share. All right. So we got that. Let's um, minimize my command line for a second. And we need to create a trigger. Uh, not a file. Apex trigger. And you know what? I forgot. What do we have to name that trigger? Woo! Make everybody dizzy. Uh, account address trigger. Yeah, I hate that. Trigger on account, and you'll pardon me, but it was what did before insert or update? Okay, as you guys know from my last video, typically we would just you know do this on every every condition and handle it with a trigger handler, but I'm afraid there'll be some trailhead elf in there that will fail this if we, you know, make it run on after insert or after undelete or some obscure thing like that. All right. So this is, um, what is happening here? I'm just going to explain. This is a feature of my editor um, saying, do you want to add the following file to get? And I'm going to say, yes, I do. Um, if I hit, hit cancel, it would put it kind of automatically on my git ignore file. Um, I'm going to open up my git ignore. I'm not sure if I even have anything on it. Um, yeah, so I am ignoring, one, you could see some of this I just generate automatically, but I'm ignoring things like files that are generated by my editor. That doesn't need to go into version control. I'm also ignoring layouts and profiles. Um, and I also typically recommend, that's your git ignore. Um, you also have a force ignore file. And for every project, Layouts is optional, uh, but I always recommend you add profiles to your force ignore. Force ignore is saying that when you use your uh, Salesforce CLI commands, like your your pull and your push, ignore. So I'm saying, hey, ignore profiles. Don't pull profiles down from my scratch org. Profiles are huge and complicated. Uh, typically, when we're doing like packages in the style of development in SFDX, we handle things with uh, with a permission set, right? We create an app and then we give certain people permissions to that app versus modifying the profiles. Um, so I always do the, just the star star profiles. That's just like a wild card. It's going to ignore anything. Um, so little tip, save yourself some trouble, ignore your profiles. And we're going to do git ignore, force ignore, and account address trigger. And now I'm going to create a class. New. Why is it? There? I don't want to start from force out. New. I guess maybe I have to right click from default, right? We're going to call this our account trigger handler. Yeah, we're going to add that to get to. Okay. So, and let's go to our trigger. Well, you know, first let's, so we got to we'll go to our, uh, do this here. And we're going to make a static method. Look, static. I don't think we need to return anything. We'll call it. Check address condition. And we want, it's gonna, we're gonna pass it trigger.new, which is gonna be a list of accounts. I'm gonna call, and keep it simple. I think that's all we're gonna do. All right. Now, just to, let's, um, Go back to our account address trigger. And we are going to use our trigger handler. Account trigger handler dot check address condition.
right. So let's just take a second talk about what we're doing here. Um, okay, so first let's go to our trigger handler. And again, if you are confused, uh, go check out the video I made on static methods versus instance methods. Um, because we declared this static, I don't have to create a new, I don't have to go into my trigger and say account trigger handler handler equals new, right? Uh, I can just access it with dot notation, right? Like this account trigger handler. Just to see, so if I, if that was not static, right, I'd have to do something like account trigger handler, handler equals new account trigger handler, and then handler dot, you know, um, something, but that's that, so it doesn't, we don't have to do that though, right, because this is a static method. And remember, trigger dot new, because we are on a list of accounts, is the same. So account trigger handler. Now, so what we're gonna do, so let's think about what we need here. Let's go back to our requirements. The account object will have a custom checkbox that should have the field label match billing address. Um, so if an account So we want to make sure that, let's see, if billing postal code has a value and match billing address is true, the record should have the shipping postal code set to match on insert or update. All right, so you're going the wrong way. So it sounds to me we're going to need a, uh, a for loop, right? And let's write some comments about what we're trying to do here. Then we're say if it's not no and checkbox is true, then update the shipping address. And I'm gonna real quick reach back. Um, yeah, so we'll update shipping to match billing. Okay. So now that we have our comments written out, we kind of know what we're trying to do here. Let's, uh, so I said we need a for loop. For account A colon in new account list. All right, and then we're gonna add our curly braces. So we're gonna say rumors for the account in the account list that's being passed in, which is the same thing as trigger.new. And one of the nice things about trigger.new is all of the fields on your S object are available. So now we've got, you know what we're gonna, we're gonna to want to actually do an if statement. If statement. Uh, well, you know what, and I wrote that, check if. I think I'm being clever and I'm just repeating my work. Um, if we're going to say if a dot what is shipping post billing postal code bang exclamation. If you want to sound like a cool developer, say say uh, say bang bang instead of an exc bang equals not equals to is not equal to null. Okay. And you know what? I'm going to put curly braces there instead of parentheses. We don't use curly braces for an if statement. If a dot billing postal code not equal to null. And we want to check. And a dot. What is the match billing address? <laughs> I am so bad. So I'm going to... Uh, I'm just going to copy and paste this. So because I did not, like I created a new custom field, but I didn't like tell 
IntelliJ to do something, or I shouldn't say IntelliJ, Illuminated Cloud. I want to give the amazing product credit where I can. Um, see, uh, it was there. I didn't think I didn't think I'd built a new system table, but it was there. I guess I could have used my code completion the whole time. Way to go, Brooks. Um, and match billing address is true, right? So we want to double equals true because this is so. Remember, if we I'm going to IntelliJ will Illuminate Cloud will help me out. So if I set equal, I'm trying to equals this assignment. I will be trying to assign it to true. We don't assign values inside an if statement. So we want to equals true. Then we want to set a dot shipping postal code, right? Equals a dot billing postal code. But so here's the thing. Um, so we could do this. I'm, this is just going to be some, some bulkification. So now I could just do update a, right? And that should work. Um, right. If I had, but if somebody started to pass in hundreds and hundreds of, you know, you're an admin, your admin's doing a bulk upload, you've got any sort of bulk operation going on. Um, this would fail for having too many DML statements. Um, so, but let's, um, just, so I'm going to show you how we work with that in a second. And in fact, I think that's actually the second challenge in dx force so first i think that's actually the second challenge in this trailhead module is how to bulkify a trigger um not push all right we're going to push that up to the scratch org and there we go success Success, I like it. All right, everything got pushed up, even some deletions I had made recently um, that weren't part of this project, but that's okay. Um, let's test it out. Let's open up our scratch org. All right, and let's just test it in the UI. Come on. Stop it, Salesforce. Account. Let's create a new account. Fake ink. And match billing address is true. 101. Fake Street, Fakeville, Massachusetts. Uh, should we use like a Boston and US? All right, let's hit save and see what happens. Ooh, we got an error. Line 14, column one. Let's take a look. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, let me show you something. I'm going to comment that out. Uh, you can tell it's been a while since I've actually <laughs> written a trigger. In my own defense, like in my actual like work life, I've been like writing APIs and things like that like crazy. So let's go back. Um, let's try to save that again. Well, the fact that we've, there we go. Account fake ink was created. Details. 
Oh, look at that. Billing address and shipping address have the same value. Um, all right, so let's just talk about uh, how I screwed that up. Let's go back to, so the re <laughs> so this is one of the beauties of a before trigger and why we, we prefer them is you don't, in this case, actually have to do DML. You just have to, because it hasn't hit the database yet. So you are doing these updates um, and then when it's actually committed, all of these field values are going to be changed. So there was no need to do DML. There's no need to do an insert. There was no need to do an update. And then in fact, this one, right? So we hit update A, um, but it was a brand new account, right? It was actually running on um, four ins. It was, it was doing an insert DML. So we were trying to update an account that didn't even exist. So Salesforce is going, hey, you know, like, dude, like this account isn't even in the database yet. How are you trying to update it? We are running an insert trigger. And so uh, we're not going to write unit tests today, but another important part. So let's go back to our, we're just going to test on the UI, uh, but we always want to do at least, and this is the same thing is true when we're writing our unit tests. We want to always test a positive and a negative scenario. One, two, three, four, five. Um, so now that I have this turned off, let's make sure that my shipping zip postal code doesn't get updated. There we go. All right, so let's do a couple things. Back to IntelliJ, back to Illuminated Cloud. And I think we have every, so we have got, what we need to do now that we think this is ready for Trailhead to test, Force, force source deploy, and we're going to send this to our dev hub because right now it just exists in our scratch org. And honestly, I sometimes I kind of forget the commands for deploy, so I'm going to use the minus h parameter, and I'm going to expand this and give me a little room to uh, help myself step through it. Um, Right, so we should just have to do dash P and we're just going to send the whole contents of the force app folder. And then I believe dash V. Oh, I may have to scroll up for a while to see that dash U. Okay. This is the name of our dev hub. Dash U. And then we're just going to say, wait 10 minutes. Hopefully we are not sitting here waiting 10 minutes for this to run. Let's see if this works. Okay, so we got a success message and we can see our account trigger handler, our custom field and the account address trigger have all been deployed to our dev hub, which is what we have trailhead set to evaluate. So fingers crossed. Let's uh, go to Trailhead and hope that this works and I don't look foolish or more foolish than I already do for doing DML on a before trigger. And uh, let's check our challenge. A field with API name, match, billing, address. So here's what it is. And I'm going to tell you. Um, remember how I said earlier about profiles and things like that with... Uh, oh, I don't remember that. I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. Is... Match, billing, address. Let's see. So we're going to... We know it exists. So it is a question of permissions. And this is because we didn't build a permission set for this application and we didn't download or update any profiles. So, 
I think this is worth doing in the video because this is definitely the sort of thing you'll see with uh, SFDX style development. So let's go down. We should see that. Where is it? Maximum billing address. There it is. Why couldn't I find it when I scrolled, right? Let's check our field level security. Oh, it's not visible to anybody. We're going to hit save. Uh, field accessibility. Let's double check. Match billing address. We'll, we'll just do system admin. Visible, visible. All right. Let's try again. Come on. All right, woo, shiny new badge. We got the confetti. <laughs> Even though I think I've passed this one like a million times by now, I still like the trailhead confetti. Um, I'm not going to tweet about it, though. Um, so there we go. That's how we do that. And that's going to let you I see um, see all the sort of mistakes that I've been doing this for a couple of years now that I still clearly make every day, even when I'm making a video where I'm hoping to look kind of smart and like I know what I'm talking about. Last step, let's wrap this up with our version control. All right, I'm going to hit clear and clear out my console. So let's type git status. Let's just see what we get. Okay. Uh, I have a couple changes that are in my staging area, right? That's what says changes to be committed. And then I have uh, my account trigger handler class that is still gets saying, hey, this is still in your working directory. It's not, if you commit right now, it's not going to be staged. So, um, or the changes to it. So we are going to get add. We are just going to add the entire force app folder. Uh, we could go down and we could specify, but we know for this project that everything we've done, that there's nothing in that folder that I don't want to add. So we're going to type get status again. All right. So now I can see that I, do, I don't have anything read, right? I don't have anything that's not being tracked, any changes not being tracked for my working directory. A command I want to show you, so you walk away for a couple hours, Friday, come back Monday, and you're like, oh, I've got these changes, I forgot to commit them, I'm not sure what I did. Type the command, git diff, um, <laughs> which would work if I was actually still in my staging area. Um, so I'm going to show you, like, let's go, here's another, so, and git's telling us, like, if we want to unstage, so I'm just going to do git reset head. Like, let's say I was like, oh, I don't want to commit these things. Boom. Get status. All right, everything is back. So now, for what if I type get diff down? I should get stuff. Ah, oh, forget it. I'll do get diff in the next video. Uh, I screwed it up and the changes aren't going to show up. So we're just going to do get add. Get add our force app folder. Get status. There we go. We got everything. Now let's do a get commit. And this is where we're actually going to save git commit and dash m is just a flag to add a commit message if you don't add that your text editor is going to pop up um, but this is a way to add a short commit message trailhead trigger module one Okay, now here's the thing I want to be clear. You have committed these. So if I typed git log, I can see. So I've got my, my commit, my SHA checksum. This is like the unique identifier for your commit. Who made the commit? The message. Um, and it could tell me like this is that I'm a, that I'm a commit ahead of because I'm on a different branch, I'm a commit ahead of my remote branch and my local branch. So what that looks like in 
like a remote thing as I've, I am up here. Um, but anyway, those commits, probably gonna make this more confusing than it should be at this point. They just exist on our local machine. So to send them to GitHub, we actually have to do git push dash u, I'm gonna say origin trigger two. All right, so let's take a look at our, um, remind me later, GitHub. And so you see, I, have, I will merge these branches in and I'll add links to these GitHubs on uh, YouTube to take a look at this. But so this is the branch, uh, trigger two, updated two minutes ago. Right, and I can go in there, and I can see here is here are all the changes. Here's everything, so you could check this out. Uh, you could fork this repo and play with it. Uh, I, I encourage you to do so. As a matter of fact, um, nothing in Lightning Web Components. Why'd I open that one? Um, right. So, and this is actually I'm going to just point that out. So we've got our like different commit messages. So when you create an SFTX project, you always get an LWC folder. I don't really know why, um, but other folders don't come until you create that sort of metadata. Um, so that's why the classes, the objects, and the triggers have a different commit message. And you can see um, LWC was committed 14 days ago when I first kind of started setting up this series versus these others, which were committed two minutes ago. Um, awesome. So I'm going to, uh, I will take care of that. And I will merge this into uh, the master branch for everybody. Um, and I will add a link to this in the YouTube uh, description notes. Hope this was helpful. Uh, keep on practicing, get better every day, and please take a minute and hit like and subscribe. I know I'm supposed to tell you that like the first five seconds of every video, and I never do. Really helps me out. Like and subscribe, please. Take care, everybody.